So I'm going to read the, the line and then give you a minute to think about it because I also want to say something really quick in response to this question. So here it is. The first poem that we have in our Modpo main syllabus for, from my life begins with, what is the meaning hung from that depend? So my question is, how is this short phrase anthemic to many of the works that we're reading this week and concepts that are driving language poetry? What is the meaning hung from that depend? And we can look at individual words or the whole phrase or however, however you want to tackle it. And I just wanted to add about this question. I feel like that we're pointing to this really important paradox about language because poetry is also a language, right? So in order for poets to write poetry, there's a stepping back from the, the medium or the material. So in other words, painters don't speak with paint. So there's this illusion that we use it all the time, but we're doing something different, creating a whole new language. Anyway, we could, we could go on forever on that question. That's a really interesting question. This, totally. this language. All right, so I'm going to turn to Gabby first. And what are your thoughts? Yeah, I have some thoughts. So the, the word depend comes from dependere, which means like hang down from. So when we say something depends on something else, we mean it's kind of hanging off of it. We mean it's it's relying on a support from something else. So so there's a literal sense, of what is the meaning hang, hung from that depend, which is like, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about things hanging off of each other? But the other thing I wanna say is that like, I think of the new sentence not as a statement about the sentence itself, but actually about the work that the period does. Um, I commented on this to, I want to say Nicholas Stern in Office Hours, who had asked me, like, why are there no question marks? Why are there no exclamation marks? Why are we always at period? And I think the reason is that what this poem does is take the period as a, a unit that can have various kinds of transitional qualities that, like, sentences coming after periods can depend on the ones before them in a variety of ways we might not expect and kind of open the possibilities for things like pun intended dependent clauses uh, following sentences and associations. So I think it's really just about opening up the possibilities of that unit of punctuation. Fascinating. Thank you so much. That I, I'm really interested in that question of punctuation and, and lack of question marks also. So thanks for pointing there. Ali. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about um, the sentence in context as well. Um, and each sentence depending on the other sentences around it. Um, always, <laughs> uh, especially um, as someone who loves prose as much as poetry, but, but especially in this text and so you know even just like the first line a dog a dog bark the engine of a truck an airplane hidden by the trees um and rooftops my mother's childhood seemed a kind of holy melodrama within the first sentence you're getting the same like need for depending on the other clauses within it as you're getting it within the sentence and between the sentences and i think one of the like fascinating liberating almost reading my life has always actually like kind of replicated something that feels more pre-verbal to me than like a lot of very like languaged obviously like texts um and i think that's because the way that she moves between sentences unlocks a different type of logic um almost more of like a dream logic than what we're used to seeing in like more like expository writing. I don't know if that like answers the question. No, that's but. amazing. Okay, so I want to repeat three points that I heard you made. And one of them has to do with context, which is so important in this book in general. So every time we have a repeated phrase, for instance, a pause, a rose, something on paper, it falls in between different 
phrases or sentences, thereby colliding and, and creating a multiplicity of new meanings. The second thing you, you mentioned, there's something almost pre-verbal, which I think also really connects to this question we were just speaking about. Isn't it true that we can have a deep connectivity and understanding of other people with no language? Isn't that true? So what is that? Is that thinking without language? Question mark. The third thing is dream, dream or associative logic with which the phrases move, and although it's very dense, somehow it also allows space for our own memories and associations to creep in, and that, that space seems very intentional in, in the composition. So thank you so much, Ali. Jason. I love everything Gabby and Ali said and everything that you just said. So I, I'm just kind of um, thinking about the phrase itself as the, I believe it's the first, it's the first phrase in the book. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's the first section, isn't it? It's it's the first section that we have oh, in yeah. our mod post syllabus, the, but not the first poem in the book. Yeah, I, I think, think it's the fourth or fifth section okay. when she's four years right. old or five. All right. Well, nevertheless, the phrase "What is the meaning hung from that depend?" It it forces you into a kind of Steinian mindset to try to move among the words, but it's to depend is to, to hang from. So what is the meaning hanging from that thing that is hanging? And I think that in a way, for me, that that's a kind of meta moment in this poem where it's asking a meta question. It's saying what meaning is generated from the way say, grammar, grammatical structure, logical paragraph structure has everything, everything depends on everything else. And I, I was trying to read it this time without trying to extract meaning from it or to, to allow it to really be paratactic and to kind of go with the proposal it makes that uh, we can have a sequence of sentences that do not depend upon the other. I mean, it's not, it's not like the veneer cards, which you could have in any order, because the, the sentences are put in order here. But because they look, it looks like prose, we want to still get meaning out of it. And I think that there's something about letting each sentence like burn brightly on its own before moving on to the next. And to see that as a kind of negotiation between the writer in the writer's present time of writing and reflection and the content being their own childhood because memory is fragmented and the relationship between anyone in one's past and to one's present is also a complex kaleidoscope of Wow, that's great. Uh, Complex change. kaleidoscope. Thank yeah. you. Amazing. I feel like that's a, there's a mini essay. There's, there's many really brilliant points that you're making here that I want to try to just say like w two words for each to just kind of capture. So the first question is what is meaning hung or meaning hanging? What is meaning when it's freed from conventions of grammar and syntax? Um, everything depends on everything else. Therefore, we have a, a living tissue of sentences that we cannot extract because that interconnectivity is so important. What happens when we don't try to extract meaning as if it were something we could pull out, um, but we just allow this parataxis? And um, appearances are deceiving. It looks like prose. But what is it? 
right? We have a we have a really interesting hybrid form here that's revolutionizing memoir, the idea of autobiography, poetry, prose poetry, etc. Um, the th one of the many brilliant things about what Jason just said has to do with interdependence. If you think about the idea of something depending on something else upon or from something else. You've got something higher and then like a mobile, right? Mm -hmm. But what Jason's talking about is a dependence that defies the gravity of that priority, that hierarchy. So interdependence, of mm -hmm. course, is, the, is a key term. Non-hierarchical. Non-hierarchical, but yeah. also horizontal as well as vertical. Thank you, Jason. Dave? I think my comment here is more of a big picture comment. Um, when I read, what is the meaning hung from that depend? I focus on what is the meaning. And it makes me think of just conceptually what Lynn Higinian is trying to do. Uh, I reread her essay, The Rejection of Closure, uh, again last night. And it really, I think, leverages the question Margaret was answer, was asking, which I think is a, a, a great, great question, which is essentially, you know, if we take all these insights about how limited uh, language is and how fraught with artificiality and limitations language is, where does that even leave us? Um, and Lynn Higini talks about this in that essay, Rejection of Closure. I think it's a great, great essay. But this essay that she wrote, uh, make no mistake, this is a closed text. Like the point is that, you know, if we want to recreate the world in certain ways, then it's great to understand the limitations of language and everything that these language poets are pointing out to us and showing us. Uh, but that's not to say that all language has to, uh, con as we conventionally understand it, is uh, no longer able to communicate. It is still useful. And I think Modpo in general is about making us sensitive and aware of all these things out there in the world that we just take for granted. So um, I, I, to go back to the Margaret's question, I think we can get maybe too caught up in each movement in thinking this means everything that we're doing before is wrong. I think what we can do is take these philosophical uh, approaches and insights on board as we still have to navigate the world using conventional ways, but knowing their limitations uh, just helps us understand everything out there a little bit better. Thank you so much. I love that beginning with what is meaning, what is the meaning, and then how it it's endlessly complicates the question of what is the meaning, what is meaning. It gets more and more complicated just focusing on that simple phrase.